Want to learn how to build muscle most effectively? Good news. I'm bringing you exclusive insights from seven of the world's smartest hypertrophy scientists. These experts are at the top of their fields, dedicating their lives to the study of muscle growth and training optimization. We've got Dr. Mike Israetel, who will be diving into exercise selection. Then we'll be hearing from Dr. Brad Schoenfeld about volume and frequency. Daniel Plotkin will be discussing the ideal rep range while Josh will be tackling the topic of training to failure. Dr. Milo Wolf will be sharing his unique hypertrophy hack. And finally, Dr. Eric Helms will be enlightening us on the critical role of nutrition in muscle building. With their research on muscle growth, we'll create a step-by-step -step blueprint that will serve as your ultimate muscle building hack. So strap in and get ready to absorb some knowledge. Without further ado, here's the best way to build muscle. So when it comes to how to build muscle, the first piece of the puzzle is exercise selection. Dr. Mike Israetel, a renowned expert in the field, has some key insights to share on this topic. According to him, the optimal number of exercises for building muscle should range between two and four per muscle group. This provides a comprehensive workout that targets each muscle from different angles, promoting balanced growth. However, consistency is also important. Dr. Israetel cautions against the common pitfall of changing exercises every week. The key to muscle growth is not variety for the sake of variety, but systematic and consistent stress on the muscles. By sticking with the same exercises for a longer period, you can focus on progressive overload and truly master each movement. That being said, it's also crucial to listen to your body. If an exercise is causing joint pain, or if it's simply become too monotonous, it might be time to switch it up. There are always alternative exercises that can work the same muscle groups without causing discomfort or boredom. So, in essence, Dr. Isratel's advice is to find that balance between consistency and adaptability in your exercise selection. It's about working smarter, not harder, to achieve your muscle building goals. Remember, only switch things up if your exercise is hurting your joints, it's boring you, and there are other good candidates around. Dr. Brad Schoenfeld then came in to explain volume and frequency. So what's the deal with these two elements in muscle building? Well, according to Dr. Schoenfeld, the number of sets needed to optimize hypertrophy falls somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 sets per muscle group weekly. Now that's not set in stone, you see there could be a benefit to specialization cycles where high volumes can be beneficial for a specific muscle group, but let's put a pin in that thought for a moment if you're just starting out on your muscle building journey, don't worry about volume for hypertrophy just yet. The first several months should be all about learning your movement patterns and getting the hang of basic routines. It's essential to master the basics before diving into more complex strategies. But what about frequency? Well, Dr. Schoenfeld suggests that there seems to be a modest hypertrophy benefit in training a muscle more than once a week, specifically when you exceed 8 to 10 sets per muscle or more per week. Now remember that pin we put earlier, here's where it comes in. Dr. Schoenfeld recommends an upper-lower split routine. This approach allows for a balanced workout that targets all muscle groups effectively over the course of a week. Remember, beginners should not be focusing on volume for hypertrophy. The first several months should just be focused on learning your movement patterns and very basic type routines. As for how heavy you should lift and the rep range you should use to build muscle, Daniel Plotkin says that, for most people, it's between 5 and 15 reps, which is typically a moderate load. Now don't let these numbers intimidate you. The secret here is not in the weight of the dumbbell you're lifting, but in your approach to the reps and sets. Daniel introduces us to the concept of progressive overload, a tried and tested technique that's been the cornerstone of bodybuilding for decades. This method is all about challenging your muscles by gradually increasing the demands placed on them. It's about making your muscles work harder than they're used to but not necessarily by piling on more weights. This is where the double progression technique comes into play. Instead of focusing on adding more weight immediately, you first concentrate on increasing your reps. Let's say you can do 8 reps with a particular weight. Your goal for the following week is to do more reps with that same weight. You keep at it until you can do 12 reps per set. Once you hit that 12 rep mark, that's your cue to add a bit more weight. And then you start the process all over again. This way, you're not just building muscle, but also improving your muscular endurance and overall strength. Keep going until you get to 12 reps per set, which is when you should consider adding a small amount of weight, continuing the process. And on whether training to failure is truly the best way to gain muscle, 
Josh weighs in with some intriguing insights. There's a common belief that pushing your body to its absolute limit during every set is the key to maximum growth. However, Josh points out that while training to total failure may lead to more growth when you examine a single set in isolation, it also creates significantly more fatigue. This fatigue can hinder your performance in subsequent sets and even your next workout, potentially leading to a decrease in overall volume. So what's the solution? Josh proposes a balanced approach, advocating for training with two to three reps left in the tank for most of your sets. This method allows for substantial muscle stimulation while also managing fatigue levels. But here's the kicker. For your final set, give it everything you've got. Empty the tank. That's why he recommends training two to three reps in reserve for all your sets, except for the last set, where you just take it all the way to failure. Dr. Milo Wolf then shares a hypertrophy hack, lengthened partials, which seem to produce more, or, at the very least, the same amount of hypertrophy than a full range of motion. This intriguing concept revolves around adjusting the way we perform our exercises. Instead of sticking to the traditional full range of motion, Dr. Wolf advocates for a shift towards lengthened partials. The science behind it is quite compelling. These lengthened partials essentially challenge the muscle fibers in a unique way, stimulating growth and adaptation without the strain often associated with full range movements. This approach is particularly beneficial for those looking to avoid joint stress or who may be dealing with an injury. So, next time you hit the gym, consider this. Instead of doing a full range of motion on a given exercise, try using about 50% or about half reps in that lengthened position. Now, it's time to learn more about the other half of the how to build muscle equation, nutrition. Dr. Eric Helms, a leading expert in the field, has some insightful tips on calorie intake. According to Dr. Helms, the key to effective muscle building doesn't just lie in the weights you lift but also in the calories you consume. Nutrition is a critical component of the muscle building equation and understanding how to optimize your calorie intake can make all the difference. But here's the catch, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Your calorie intake should be scaled according to your experience level. Yes, you heard it right, your experience level plays a crucial role in determining the right calorie surplus to aim for. For beginners, Dr. Helms recommends gaining around 2% of your body weight per month. This would align with a calorie surplus in the range of 300 to 500 calories per day. Now, this might seem like a lot, but remember your body is in an anabolic state and can utilize these extra calories effectively for muscle growth. As for intermediates, things change slightly. Gaining about 1% of your body weight per month is a decent target. This translates to a calorie surplus of somewhere between 200 to 300 calories per day. You're past the beginner gains phase, so your body needs fewer additional calories for muscle growth. Now if you're advanced, the scale tips even further. Dr. Helm suggests a modest 100 to 200 calorie surplus at most. At this level, gaining somewhere between half a percent to 1% of your body weight per month is the goal. You've been at this game for a while, your body has adapted, and it doesn't need as many extra calories to continue building muscle. So, there you have it. The key to effective muscle building lies not just in the weights you lift, but also in the food you eat. Remember, your nutrition should be tailored to your experience level. And then if you are advanced, we're probably talking 100 to 200 calorie surplus at most and gaining like half a percent to 1% of their body weight per month.